Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Tatting Video Series. Today I'm going to show you how to tie in ends. There are several ways that you can tie in ends. Uh, one is you tie them in as you go. Another one is using floss threaders. Another one is using blue tack. And the last but not least, sewing in our ends. Today I'm using size 3 crochet cotton. And to tie in your ends when you first start, you're going to have, especially if you're using two colors, you're going to have little tails. And the first thing we're going to do is get our blue tack. What you do with your blue tack, I'm going to show you this real quick. You lay your thread out, put it on top of your shuttle. Okay, you see that? And just roll that blue tack around in your hand. Stick it on your thread. You can also use scotch tape, masking tape, painter's tape. I find that some tapes do leave a sticky film on the uh, shuttle threads, on the shuttle. So I don't use tape. I use the blue tack because it leaves no residue. Okay. So today what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to hide this chain or hide this tail using blue tack. And we're going to make a chain today, so you can see how it works, okay? Now, we want to get everything set up to make a chain, okay? We've got our shuttle in this hand, our ball thread in this hand. The purple is the ball thread, it goes to the ball. The peach is the shuttle thread. And what you do is you attach your thread to your shuttle. Be careful when you're doing this using the blue tack because the blue tack can hang on this thread and come off. So we go ahead and tack as normal. Just watch your blue tack. Now you want to do three, four, maybe five stitches to tie in those ends. However, if you're working with two ends to tie in, my advice is do it through the whole element because this does show when you tie in your ends it bulks up where the ends are so if you've got two threads make sure you've got enough of a tail to work on both ends through the entire element that does not mean the entire piece of tatting it means like through the whole ring or through the whole chain that you're doing that's an element okay so we've done the first half. Now we're going to do the second half. That is one stitch. All right. We're going to do two, we're going to do three. Okay three stitches we've got it worked in you see how it's running side by side with the tatting thread to the shuttle let me zoom in on that we've got three stitches on here so you can see what we're doing here go in just a little bit we have our blue tack stuck to the outside of our shuttle with our thread up underneath of it that's our tail and over here we have our ball thread we're going to do a couple more stitches so you can see how that goes through follows that core thread that's what you want you want it to follow the core thread because if you don't and you get it tied up in your stitches it's going to show you don't want the tail to show because it's a totally different color okay so that's how you tie in ends using blue tack okay now the next method well let me finish this up let me finish this up one thing that a lot of people will do and not think about it when they're tying in their ends they'll end their ends on the end of the stitches you don't want to do that you don't want to end that tail in the uh, end of a stitch and beginning of another stitch you want to end it between the stitch between the first and second first and second half never ever 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 do you end a stitch in the middle of a pico or at the end of your double stitch. You do it in the middle between the first and second half. 
And what you're going to do is take that tail, fold it back over your back side of your work, okay? And then continue the stitches, okay? Once you do that, she's in there, okay? And when you're finished with that element, you can cut it out or wait till the whole project is done. Uh, myself, I cut it out, you know, once I'm done with the element. The reason is, is you get tails this long all up in your work. You got a tangled mess after about third row. So you don't want that. So I just go ahead and cut my stitch, uh, cut my tail off. What you do is you take your scissors. You want to get as close to your work without cutting your work and snip that off. Okay? Then I do what I do with my crochet when I'm hiding ends. Just wiggle. Work that thread back in there, okay? And then pull that element tight, okay? What that does is it assures that it's locked in, okay? The next way we're going to do it, we're going to make a ring, okay? And we're going to hide this tail here, okay? Let's see, we should have started with a ring, I guess. Let's cut that off. We're just going to start a new one. Today it's not a good day. It's raining here. It's humid here. Got storms moving in this afternoon. We've had storms now for three days. And my dog does not like storms. I don't like storms. So, anybody with arthritis understands when the weather is acting funny, it hurts. But we're going to get through this. Alright, now, we're going to hide the end in a ring, okay? We're going to hide this purple end in the ring, okay? reason I'm going to do that so you can see how it hides in a ring. And what we're going to use today is our floss threaders. This is what they look like. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. Let me see. There we go. Well, that's not helping much either, is it? But it's a little piece of plastic. It's got a loop on it and a pointy end. I uh, gum puts them out. They're over in the dental section where you buy your toothpaste and stuff. Uh, floss threaders are used by people that wear braces to pull floss through their teeth or through their braces. Anyway, that's what we're going to use. Now you can also use tatting thread, uh, monofilament, fishing line, anything that's flexible that you can pull through the thread. Okay, and what you're going to do is set up for making a ring. Okay. Let me zoom out some, just a hair, because you that, mo uh, that uh, floss threader, you can't hardly see. So we're going to try to get it to where you can see it and see what I'm doing here. Because this is an important step. Alright, we want our ball thread and that other thread out of our way. Do the ring around our hand. You see my tail is still hanging down there. My purple tail is still hanging down there. You don't want it coming up through this. This is where your stitches are made. You want that ball thread to be attached to your shuttle thread, okay, for hiding. So what we're going to do is first off we're going to make our first stitch. Okay, and what I do is I make the stitch, alright, because the first part of the stitch, hiding your ends, is the hardest part in getting your floss threader in. So the easy way is make the stitch. When you get the loop and you see what direction your thread is running, okay, for new beginners, okay, then you put it in. Alright, now. You leave this hanging down here. You don't want to mess with it. The only thing you're messing with is the floss threader. Now you're going to pull that up tight just as if you're tatting anything. Okay? Now we're going to do the second half of that stitch. Okay? And that floss threader will come up through that loop. Give myself some room here. 
just the first stitch using a floss threader is the hardest till you get the hang of it. Okay, there you go. Now that floss threader is going to follow right through your work. And you just take it right along that core thread. Okay, now it's not wanting to cooperate today. There we go. Takes it, it takes a little time. Um, you get the hang of it though. And I love floss threaders because they're so versatile in tatting. I mean, I use them to thread needles. I use them for tying in ends. Um, they have several uses. I'm sure there's many more than I know about. Okay. Now, once we get say three stitches on this ring. That's all we're going to do. We're going to do a half stitch with the floss threader. Remember, you don't want to come with an end in the middle of a, uh, the end of a stitch or in the middle of a pico. Okay, so we've got three stitches that we've run this floss threader through. And what that has done, okay, is put in enough room to hide that tail in, okay? Now you're going to do one more half stitch, the first half, okay? Once you get that first half stitch in, here's what you're going to do. Same as before with that tail. Get that floss threader out of your way. Now you're going to finish your work, okay? You're going to make a chain of, let's say, ten. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, a ring of ten, seven, eight, Okay, now we can close that ring. Don't worry about your floss threader. Not right now. Don't worry about your end. Okay, you're going to close that ring. Now that we have the ring closed, what you're going to do is take that purple tail, run it up through that floss threader. Okay? Leave it right there. Then pull that floss threader. And what it's going to do is pull that stitch, or pull that thread up in there, and hide it. Let me see if I can't get it to pull a little better. It doesn't want to cooperate with crochet cotton at all. Maybe because it's not as smooth as the mercerized cotton. But I do have difficulty getting my ends in using the crochet cotton. Let's see what we can do. There we go. Alright, once you've pulled it through, see, find the side of that that finishes pulling that tail through. There we go. Then take your floss threader off. Now, I'm going to turn it over. You see it's coming up through that stitch. Let me show you. I'm going to zoom in. Here's our tail. See it's coming up through that stitch. And the floss threader pulled it in from down here. Okay? So, after you get it in, pull it up snug. Hold that element. Put it up snug. Fix your element. Make sure it looks proportionate. And take a pair of scissors. Cut off that tail. Okay? We got it out of the way. Now, we're going to wiggle just a little, right there where it's in. You want to work that into the pattern. So you're going to just work, 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 back and forth. Alright, and now, you can see it's gone. There's no tail. No tail. It's gone. 
So that's how you hide your ends using a floss threader. It's the same way that you hide the ends that on uh, making a chain, the difference is you're using a floss threader to pull them through. The floss threader tends to make it pull through more even than working them in. So the next way to tie in your ends is to work your ends in. For this, you'll need a crochet hook or a shuttle that has a hook on the bot on the end of it, like the Moonlights, the GR8s. Both of those have a pick on the end. Um, you know, the little scoop picks, anything that's got a pointy thing on the end of your shuttle will work. I use a crochet hook, okay? So what you want to do is we're going to do our first half of our stitch. This is how it gets fun. Okay, we're going to follow that core thread, see? Just stick it down in there. Pull it through. The first stitch is the one that gets you. If you don't get that in there, it's not going to work. Not right. It'll work, but it just, the first stitch is the hardest. Okay? So, then we're going to do the second half of that stitch. Now, with normal tatting thread, it's stiffer, and it'll follow right along where you're tatting. Okay? So we're going to do another stitch. Okay. Now the way to use a crochet hook, take your crochet hook, run it up through the center of that loop, pull your thread through. And if, it, if it's a small tail and you're really fiddling with it, trying to get that tail in, use a crochet hook. It's the best thing. Because uh, it can get it and grab it and pull it up through there and uh, I've tied in ends that were maybe a quarter inch you know so using a crochet hook but that's how you hide your ends just normally okay without blue tack or a floss threader you just use a crochet hook now in the center of the next stitch the first half that's where we're going to drop that tail off Okay, now it is your choice how many stitches you run that tail through, okay? If you want to run it through 15 stitches, that's fine. It's your choice. It's what you feel comfortable with. I do know that projects like jewelry, if you don't run it through at least five stitches, it will come out, okay? I mean, that's just a given. It will come out. So make it a habit if it's going to use be used a lot knit you know fiddled with a lot you want to get it through more stitches so now you see we have our tail there it is right there and we're just going to whack that little thing off with our scissors okay let's pull it in there pull it down you don't want it coming out on top of the chain or in the middle of the ring so what I, you know, just snug it down. And whatever way you pull, it's going to go. It moves with you. It's very forgiving. And you want to cut that off right next to your work without cutting your work. Now, if you've got picots on here, be careful. I have cut picots. And then your pieces will ring. And just fiddle it. Get that tail in. Okay. Once you get it in, pull her tight. And you may get a little nubby that sticks out there. If you do, just pull it around. Cut it off. You can get closer. Okay? But that's basically how you tie in ends, just with a crochet hook. So we've learned the floss threader, the crochet hook, and we've learned the blue tack. Now we're going to sew in some ends. Okay? Now today, because of um, what we're doing. I'm going to make a quick chain here and show you how to sew in your ends using one of my tatting needles so that you can see what to do. Not too many people like sewing in the ends, especially on that small thread. It is no big deal. Okay? My little doggies downstairs, we've got people working out front. Why, I don't know. It's pouring rain. But they're painting. I can see the paint peeling off. I don't own the building, so if that's the way they want to do it, 
knock stuff out. <laughs> That's what I say. Okay, so let's make us a quick chain, say, of seven double stitches. Okay, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now we've got seven double stitches. They're not the prettiest ones in the world, but we've got seven double stitches. Now we want to sew in these ends. We're not going to even worry about these. Normally, these would be tied in to your work, okay? So we're going to sew in these ends, and I'm using a tatting needle, so I'm going to have to have pretty long threads here, which is fine. Okay. Now, to sew in your ends, I'm going to sew in the core thread first because it's a different color you can see what I'm doing normally you would sew the purple end in first okay now I take my floss threader and I thread my needle okay drop it in there pull it down get my thread here pull it through my needle Okay, now I've got my needle threaded. Now, let me get this zoomed in so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, like I said, it's not the prettiest tatting in the world, but it's for demonstration purposes. This here is the front side. You see your little pant loops, or pant waistbands? That's the front side. On the back, you have basically the same thing, but one end is comes up and it looks like a half of a stitch. This is the side you want to work on. Okay? You want to go up behind that waistband. Okay? I'm hoping this works using this tatting needle because I really think it would show better on video than working with the smaller threads. You want to come up behind that waistband right there. Okay. Push your thread up. Pull it through. Hold your work while you're doing this. Okay. Now, some people go all the way through and come out the other waistband. I like for my stitches to lay right in the little ridge between so I take it and flip it back around okay but you want to do it in the waistband because you don't want to disturb your stitches okay on that chain don't want to disturb the stitches on the ring but you just come in the back side of that come up under that waistband your thread through. See why tying in your ends this way is no pleasure. Okay, and you can see the stitches laying on top. When you get through tying in your ends going through as many as you want, you pull on that thread and it'll pull it right down into the groove. Okay, but that's the gist of tying in your ends using a needle. Remember the back side, use the waistbands. Go up through the waistband on the back side of your work. Okay? Once you do that, your ends are in. Okay? They're not going nowhere. Tatting is a... You don't throw this in the wash. Okay? Wash machines can rip piece tatting to pieces. It's like any other delicate project you do when you crochet with, la you know, crochet lace. You don't go in the wash. You hand wash it. If you throw it in the wash, you know it's coming apart. So, on that note, that's the lesson for today, how to tie in our end. I've showed you several different methods to use, and it's whatever you want to do and how you want to do it, but you need to tie in your ends to finish your work. And sewing is the last remedy for that. Uh, like I say, there's too many other tools to use 
that makes tying in your ends a whole lot easier. Uh, the floss threader works great when you're at the end of your work. And then the blue tack works great on the beginning of the work. Those two methods together is what I use most commonly. Very, very seldom do I tie in my ends. The last thing I want to show you, uh, some uh, patterns will say cut and tie. Now I'm going to show you on here, okay, just what the cut and tie means. Uh, you'll cut your thread from your shuttle and your ball thread, okay, and then you've got two ends. And there is a knot that tatters use, and it's a square knot. And the way you do a square knot, you take the right side thread over the left, okay, and you pull it tight, okay. Once you get it pulled tight, all right, you take your left side over the right. That is a square knot, okay. There's one other knot that is used frequently in tatting, and it's called the weaver's knot. They use it in other forms of uh, thread work, but the weaver's knot, the way you do that, I'm going to show you real quick. Let me zoom out just a little. There we go. You can still see what I'm doing. Say you run out of thread, okay? You want to add more thread. The weaver's knot, the way you do it is you tie a slip knot. Now, I tie my slip knots the way my grandmother taught me, um, but you tie a slip knot, okay? Now, we're going to use the purple thread here so you can see what I'm talking about. You put the purple thread in, okay? Your little loop. You pull that loop closed, all right, onto that purple thread. Once you do that, you grab the peach threads, your tail and your shuttle thread, and you just pull them together, and you'll hear it pop and then your purple thread will be on top. Let me zoom in so you can see what that looks like. You see? That purple thread come up. Let me do that again so you can see what I'm doing here. And it's a very small knot. It looks pretty big on here because I'm using such big thread, but it's virtually a knot that hides because it is so small and you don't see a big bulky knot in your work. Okay, let's do that again. We're going to tie a slip knot. The way I tie a slip knot, to me it's easy, but I'm going to show you real quick. Some people do it different. I take it, wrap it around the two fingers, come across the front, or come from the back, get this right, across the front, through the loop. Okay, do you see that? Let's do it again. Cross the two fingers, around the back of the thread, grab your tail, here's your tail, see, tail, okay, open your fingers up enough so you can get that around, and then ring it across the two through the loop, and you have a slip knot, okay, now, you're going to put that purple thread through the loop, okay, Pull out enough so you got a little play. Hold both ends of that purple thread. Grab not the tail end, okay, that's your tail end, but the other end, that's where you're going to pull it up to that purple thread. All right, now you grab your two peach colored threads and watch what it does. You pull them and you'll hear it snap. When it snaps, that purple thread pops through. That knot ain't going nowhere, okay? And you use that when you're tying new thread on your project that you've run out of thread to, okay? So that's your lessons for today. I hope you enjoyed the class. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to answer them. 
So until the next class, we're going to be working on split rings in the next class. So have fun tatting and enjoy the day. And I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.